We hear you guys. You're having a tough time getting over that early game difficulty curve and enshrouded, and we get it. There are certain aspects of the game that are just straight up challenging, but if you have a little tenacity and the right gear, you can get over the hump. We're not gonna bury the lead here. There is an insanely powerful one-handed sword you can get super early on in the game called the Wailing Blade, and this thing absolutely rips. Yes, it's lower level, let's just call that what it is, but being able to get a legendary weapon this early on that you can upgrade is huge. If you're struggling with enemies in the Shroud or even pushing into Revelwood and having a hard time with combat, this thing will get the job done. Once fully upgraded, you're looking at a melee weapon that deals all three types of base damage, cutting, piercing, and blunt, which means you can really push its damage with some key skill points. In fact, we talk about these melee skills in our best skills to get early video, so check that out. Now, I do also recommend you pick up the double jump skill to make all of this weapon hunting a bit easier. Now that aside, this weapon is amazing and well worth the five minutes it takes to pick it up. Quest or no quest, there's nothing stopping you from heading to this location here on the west side of the map and running into the scavenger stash. Avoid the explosive traps at the front door and take your time to cut down the enemies blocking your path. If you're still relatively undergeared and underleveled, this might be a bit challenging, but just take your time. Bring a wand with you if you want to kite the enemies around and take them off the board. Once you do that, you can head to the back of the cave and there in the gold chest is the Wailing Blade. This weapon has the added bonus of being a bit of a nightlight, which is helpful given Enshrouded's incredible darkness at night. But what's a good one-handed sword without a powerful shield to go with it? The Riptide is an incredible early game option that not only provides you with decent block, parry power, and solid durability, but also comes with a 10% increase to poison resistance. Let me tell you, poison is not your friend. Don't believe me? Just ask Schmo. In all seriousness, if you're going for a melee or tank build, having a shield is a no-brainer. Once you have some skill points and a few food buffs, you can practically hide behind your shield and never take damage outside of a few special attacks, so why wouldn't you want an item to make that even easier? To reach the Riptide, you'll need to strengthen the Flame Altar. Full transparency, ours was strengthened to level 4 before we found the item, but I'm relatively sure you only need a level 2 flame to enter the Shroud Zone here and enter the point of interest that's hiding the treasure. Technically, this is an elixir well, so we cleared out all the enemies first, but you could just beeline for the treasure chest if you want. There's actually a small pathway inside the cave to the left. Just keep sneaking through the openings until you eventually reach a small landing. You could also approach this from the back like we did, but it's a bit of a roundabout. Thank God for voxel survival games or we would have been stuck for a quick minute. Either way, your efforts will be rewarded with a new legendary shield, the Riptide. If sword and board aren't your thing, then there are other options, and we'll start with an easy one, the Misfortune Mace. This weapon requires virtually no combat and can be found right within the starting area of Enshrouded. To locate this weapon, all you need to do is head into the Shroud area here, move towards the base of the bridge, and head to the second structural column. On the north side, you'll notice a small patch of rubble. Keep an eye out for these in the future because it's clearly a material the devs like to use to hide secrets. In this case, if you pull out your pickaxe and chip away at the rubble, you'll reveal a golden chest. Inside, you will hopefully find the Misfortune Mace, a level 6 two-handed melee weapon that deals 28 base piercing and blunt damage. When fully upgraded, we're talking about a really solid weapon right out of the gate, and in this case, you'll also get a weapon with Mana Leech, which, if you're leaning into a mage build, could prove useful. It's not a lights out weapon by any stretch, but during the first leg of the game, the Misfortune Mace could be a difference maker. Here's the thing, this is not a guaranteed drop out of the chest, but I'll do you one better. If you're the host, you can simply restart your game and the chest will reset, giving you another crack at a piece of loot. It may take a few attempts and you might get the Misfortune Mace or something else entirely, possibly even a legendary. You can reset any chest in the game with this technique, at least for now, so whether it's a mace or a legendary axe, it's not a bad trick to have up your sleeve. All right, stepping away from super early game items, we know that ranged weapons are a heavy favorite in survival games, and while there are loads of rare and epic weapons you could get, there's one legendary ranged weapon that cuts above the rest, the Fell Commander Bow. This thing is impressive, with decent damage and increased arrow speed, and five upgrades that improve the weapon drastically. 
Vicious is the perfect buff for co-op players that can consistently land shots to the back of enemies while their teammates hold aggro. Precise is just an all-around great buff, and Brutal gives you a healthy buff to your crit damage. The other buffs aren't bad, but they don't synergize well since it's hard to be proficient in both ranged and magic at the same time. It is possible, but not optimal. To get the Fel Commander Bell, you need to head far north, all the way to this part of the map. It may seem like we're well beyond the early parts of the game, but believe me when I say Enshrouded is larger than you think. You'll have to do a fair bit of fighting, there are some tough enemies here, but the biggest challenge is the Thunderbrute that you need to take down. If you do that, you'll be rewarded with the Fell Commander Bow, and this weapon will serve you well into the future, including your time in the next zone, the Nomad Highlands. For those that haven't experimented with ranged weapons, I recommend you do so. They're incredibly powerful, and because they can deal crit damage via headshots, it's a great weapon type if you're looking to be the damage dealer within your group. We can't tout a legendary bow without also giving our caster friends a legendary option of their own. In this case, we're talking about a small legendary farm that you can repeat over and over again until you get a weapon you're happy with. To accomplish this, we're heading up north to Pikes Mead's Reach, a city you'd best get comfortable exploring as we'll be here for quite a while. I recommend you throw down a flame altar so you can quickly access this part of the world. If you didn't already know, you can have multiple flame altars down across the world, and that number is dependent on the strength of your flame, which you can check at your main base. And keep in mind that whichever flame altar you log out at, you'll respawn at. So this is a super helpful tip for farming sections of the map. Once you get down your altar, it's a matter of taking out a thunder brute right inside the city walls. As always, we recommend you take double jump and work your way up this crumbling wall here. Right on the other side of the ramparts, you can drop down and guarding the shroud route right in front is the thunder brute. This mini boss has a random loot table that can drop pretty much everything from epic and rare items all the way up to incredibly powerful legendary swords, bows, wands, and stabs. Once you kill the boss, simply exit the game and restart the server. Just like with the Misfortune Mace, you do need to be the server host to execute this properly. Once you're back in, head to the boss area again, take him out, and keep claiming his loot until you get what you're looking for. This is a great mid-game farm that you can repeat dozens of times in just a short matter of minutes, so don't overlook the power of a simple farm technique to get some pretty lucrative pieces of gear. Since you're in the city, you can also grab the Wolf's Maw. This is a level 25 common melee weapon with high base damage. It's a decent sword if you're looking for something simple with chunky damage, but it doesn't come with any additional benefits of a unique weapon. To find this, you just need to reach this spot in the middle of Pike's Mead's Reach. You'll see an orange glow on the ground, and if you search the body, you'll be able to claim the sword. This is another one-handed weapon that can be used with a shield. At this point, we've covered most of our bases, but we wanted to end with a bang, a unique set of armor that you can and should pick up. One, because it's a solid melee set that doesn't have to be crafted, and two, because it looks badass. We call it the Sauron set over here, but it's actually called the Guard of the North set, and the pieces can be found here around different parts of the city. Almost everything will require some form of combat, so you'll need to make sure you have a solid handle on that before you attempt to complete the set. The gloves can be found behind the first shroud route, right where you left off from obtaining the undergrowth staff. The headpiece is arguably the most challenging to get as it does require you to scale the castle walls in the far northeast. You can reach this without defeating the first boss, I want to be clear there. It just takes a bit of navigating around the back and the side to pull off. The chest piece is found here at the bottom of a necropolis guarded by reanimated skeletons. The legs can be picked up in the northwest corner of the city in an underground area guarded by some shroud enemies, and the boots can be found in the destroyed tower in the southeast part of the city. Keep in mind, this set is less about substance, more about style, which is why the buffs don't really impress me a whole lot. Yes, you get some solid melee enhancements, but you also lose maximum time in the shroud when wearing each piece of armor. It's not the end-all be-all, you can easily still wear the armor and function just fine, but it's something to consider. So there you have it, some amazing early game gear that you can get in Enshrouded. Keep in mind the Nomad Highlands are just a stone's throw away, and you're going to need the best gear you can muster if you hope to take on some of the challenges there. So gather what you can now, and be sure you're ready for the next leg of your adventure. And speaking of which, if you're still struggling with Enshrouded and you want just a bit more help, check out this video here. We break down some of the best tips and tricks we've learned in our combined 100 plus hours with the game. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.